What's up, guys? So, this is the fifth question on the school's mathematics competition in Sweden last year. So, and the question was, sorry, this was the fourth question. Fuck. Ah, don't mind that. Four. So the question is, which possible integer case can you obtain from any integer a, b, and c? such that this equation holds that is basically the problem yes exactly that's the problem okay so uh, i'll just start by simplifying this i'll just multiply everything by abc uh, i'll sp specifically put it into that parentheses so then you get that so then you get that a plus b plus c times so here we have, I could arrange the things a bit. So C is first and A is last. So it makes a bit more, it would seem a bit easier, but I don't, I don't want to do that. So I'll just multiply this in and I'll switch the terms around. So it says, so it's nice, looks nice. So, so AB, so AB is ABC times whatever C, obviously. Uh, so AB plus AC plus BC times whatever C is equal to 9abc plus k. And then we can just swap this to the other side real quick. So we'll just have minus... Minus 9abc is equal to k. So the question is then, what values can this expression, this left-hand expression, give from integer inputs, integer a, b, and c. So, we'll just try the most simple answer. All of them are the same. What do you get then? Well, then you would get here, you would get Three. Say, call them x. 3x times 3x squared minus 9x cubed, which is... This 3x times 3x squared is 9x cubed, so this is just equal to 0. So, we have 0. That's okay, we can, we can guess. Um, if we maybe try that one of them are equal to one and all of the rest are equal to zero. Um, and now let's try, let's try, go back to the first one. We'll just, instead of just trying numbers, we'll try different relations between the, the inputs. So we'll try, uh, we can try this. We have a is equal to x, let a be equal to x plus 1, b, b equal to c, which is equal to x. So we'll try to uh, write this out. Um, so that would be, I can just write out the entire thing so I don't mess up. We then have x plus 1 plus x plus x times, then we have x squared plus x, just x plus 1 times x plus the same thing, x could be equal to c. So we have x plus 1 times x, which is x squared plus x. And then bx is just x squared. And then we have minus 9 x squared times x. Plus 1. And what is this then? Uh, we can just make small notations here above what this actually is. So this is 3x plus 1. This is 3x squared plus 2x. And this should be... Yeah, exactly. That's all we need. So then you have the, the first. So that would be equal to 3x times. Yes, so that's 9x cubed plus 6x squared plus 2x. And then we have x squared plus 2x minus 9x cubed minus 9x squared. We can see that. So these terms cancel out, and then we have 
this this thing here is 9x squared so these also cancel out so what we have left is 2x what we have left is 2x so what does this mean it means that we can obtain any even integer since x can be anything any any integer so we can obtain any even integer and so now we know that all even integers called called the the set of all even integers e is a subset a subset of all the possible k integers k we'll just call that big k the set of all possible k's so we know that all even integers can be obtained all even integers in are included in the solution and as it turns out this these two sets are actually equal that's all the solutions there are and to show this <laughs> we just have to prove that k cannot be odd can't be an odd number from this formula so i will save this and i'll erase everything else okay so what we have to show now is that k cannot be an odd integer because if we would would be able to do this we would essentially show that both all the even numbers are a subset of k and if we prove that k can only be even then we basically prove that k is a subset of all the even numbers so therefore they are just equal yeah they just have very they're equal they're the same all the solutions are even so what we do this what we do now is basically we we first we note the fact that all integers in this left hand side of the equation are equally represented saying that if we would switch a b and c there wouldn't be any difference so yeah firstly note that and then secondly we just have to so th therefore we don't have to really try all the combinations of if the integers are even or odd so it's therefore it's enough to just check if there's one two or three odd integers so the first one is if just they're all even then we can denote this as we only count with uh, modulus two so what we would get then is that well an even an even num number to the even number modulus two is always equal to zero that's the that's the definition so we're just counting in modulus two and therefore we can exchange all the even numbers for zeros and all the odd numbers for ones uh, so the first case is when uh, all are even so the first case if is if they're all even then we just get zero plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero zero zero, zero everything then we just get that k modulus 2 is 0 which is an even number so this doesn't violate and we'll check if we have one odd number and the rest are even what do we get then we will get 1 plus 0 so we get 1 times 1 times 0 one times zero zero times zero so that's just zero all that 
disappears and that's times zero so we still get that k modulus 2 is also e equal to zero therefore k is even if we have two odd numbers say a and b we have that one plus one which is then we have two and then we have here we actually have one plus zero plus zero and here we still have one even number so this whole thing becomes even or zero that is so we get two plus two times one minus zero that is two which is in modulo two of course zero and then if we have that all of them are odd for three odd we have that We have that. Uh, one plus one plus one, that's three. Times one plus one plus one, that's also three. Minus nine. And what is that? Three times three minus nine, that is zero. So k modulo two is always zero, regardless of the evenness or oddity of a, b, and c. And therefore, we have concluded that you can get all, k can be all even integers, and k can also be only even integers. So therefore, the sets are equal to each other, and all the solutions are that k, the all, all, all k that can, can be obtained are even numbers. All, they're, they're all even. So yeah, that's the answer. And uh, hope you like this. Sorry if the video got a bit long, but uh, I hope you you you're fine. Uh, so uh, yeah, have that was the problem. I hope you found it interesting. And uh, make sure to subscribe if you like this. And uh, I'll see you some other time. Bye bye.